If you're on Instagram or TikTok, you've probably seen these videos floating around. They're by Homecraft Designer and one video on TikTok has almost 50 million views. So in this video, you're gonna see how to create these animations using D5 Render. Let's get started. So the first thing that you need to do is have a SketchUp model. If you want to know how I've added materials or assets, you can watch my other videos. But basically, what I recommend is to have everything ready before you start the animation process. And to set up this scene, there is an option to render a top view in D5 Render, but it's orthographic and we want perspective. So you can go back into SketchUp and synchronize the view. You can see after it's done, when you go into D5, the view has changed. And then from SketchUp, you can click on the top view and it'll be the perfect view. Now, most of the assets in the scene are from the D5 asset library because I have the pro version. But if you see, for example, the curtain rail, it's curtainrail.skp. It's a SketchUp model that I've imported into D5. But you can take advantage of the dynamic assets of D5 render like Barbara and the curtains. Who's Barbara? This one. No. <laughs> So mainly there's three scenes. One is for the before design, one is after, and then the vertical view. So if I click on the second scene, you can see how it's changed and all of the assets are different. In the newest update of D5, you can set up vertical scenes really easily. So next to your scene list, you can see that there's a camera icon. So if you click on it, you can adjust the camera settings such as the aspect ratio, the size, point of view, things like that. Once you're happy with it, you can just update the scene. Now let's talk about the actual animation and how to keyframe. So this is the first clip, which is the before or let's say bad design. Everything kind of slots into place, like the bed, bedside table, yeah. Barbara just walking in. If I click on any of the models, you can see at the top of the shots, these dots, these are the keyframes. Now as for the curtains, because they were dynamic, I didn't need to add a keyframe. Now Barbara, I did add keyframes because I wanted to control her movement. So the first thing that you need to do is to add a clip and then add the current view to your shots. Because this is a static view, there's no rotation or movement into the view, I recommend having two shots. And you can also control the length of each shot. Click on the model that you want to animate, for example the bed, and move this blue line just a little bit. I'm gonna add a keyframe and then move it slightly to the right and then add another keyframe. Second keyframe is the final position and then if I go back to the first one, make sure that it's highlighted and that it's blue, that means that it's activated. And then I can change the location of the bed. So if I play it, you can see that it's animated. And then you can repeat the steps to the bedside table. So, and I wanna add the keyframe exactly when the bed stops moving. So if I click on the bed, click on this button here, and then I can add a keyframe. Add the second keyframe and then move the bedside table. So you can see how it plays really smoothly. And you can do the same exact steps for the closet and Barbara. Now as for doors, doors are a little tricky to animate because you can see how the point of rotation is right at the middle of the asset. If it was at the corner or I can control it to act as a hinge, that would be perfect. But once again, we're gonna add a keyframe exactly when Barbara kind of walks into the wall and then another keyframe before that. So now for the final position, I can rotate it and then move it into place. But the good thing about animation in D5 is that I can go into the scene and make sure that the door is in the correct position and it won't affect my view at all. So if I play it, it plays really smoothly. Wow. But if you look really closely, I feel like the door is kind of rotated into the wall. And the only way to fix that is to add a keyframe in the middle, go back into the view and make sure that it doesn't go into the wall. But yeah, now it's opening and Barbara just walks in. Now the second clip for the after design, you can see everything just slides into place. I was actually really happy with the curtain rail because it kind of scales and then goes higher. I was like, wow, I'm a, I'm a creative editor. Just the little things that makes us happy. And then here the door kind of gets stuck in the way of the rug and then you move the rug. I mean, it's so creative. And if you want to switch between the timeline and the shot list, you can click on this button here. Now one thing that I found quite confusing is you can see how the rug and the door, for example, are animated in shot 2, right? Now if I delete shot 2 and then I play it again, it's still animated. And if I add another shot, you can see how the rug and the doors are still animated. So for me, that means 
that the timeline and the shortlets are separate. <coughs> <coughs> Can I have some water, please? Now, one thing to remember as well is that if you're in this window for the animation or video and you move this closet, let's say, in a different position and then you play the animation, because this closet has a keyframe on its location, it will not allow you to move it. So that kind of gets a little confusing. So if you want to actually really move the closet, go into your actual scenes, not in the animation window, and then move the closet. But if I go back into the animation, it will still move into that spot because it was keyframed. And that gets a little confusing because I went into this vertical scene. I was like, wait a minute, what, what is this? this? Like, what did I do? Did I, is there something that I need to hide? Is there something in view? And then I realized that it was the closet. And because in this view, it wasn't keyframed, so it did move. Does that make sense? So I went back into my original scene, moved the closet back, and then went into my vertical scene. And you can see it works fine now. So when you're creating shots and clips, it was really easy to set up as a continuous scene and clip. But I found that my computer kind of lagged. But basically, if the shot is static, I recommend adding two scenes. One before the animation and then one after. And if there is a camera movement, I'll show you how to do it. So in shot two, the first scene is the last scene from shot one. And then the second scene is the new position or where I want the camera to rotate. The last scene is because I want to hold the camera in place, I will add another scene because it's static. Now, if I wanted to add or continue this animation, I will go and move this blue line to the last part and then create a new scene, move the camera to wherever I want it and then create a new scene. So you can see how it rotates very smoothly into that last scene. And what's good about this is that you can control how long the, the whole scene is and you can also control how long or how fast the rotation of the camera. So if I change it into one second, you can see how it moves really fast. And once you're happy with all of the animations, you can set your resolution, set your format, and then render it or add it to your rendering queue. And if I go to my rendering queue, you can see just how many times I've tried to create this animation. Now, I want to show you these doors. These doors are actually not 3D modeled, so they're not SketchUp models that I've imported. If you go into the D5 rendering assets and then go to basic model, you can see that they have a plane. So these closets are actually planes and what's really good about it is that you can set exact measurement and size. So I was able to create these doors and they will fit into my closet perfectly. Now as for animating the doors, I actually wrote down, I wrote down in my notebook the exact numbers for the X and Y and Z axis. So when you're animating, you can type in these keyframes and it will line up perfectly. So if I go into my animations, you can see how each door is animated and they all close right at the same time. This door in the middle was a little annoying. I'm not sure, maybe it's the, the view, but you can see how it animates into the wall. So again, I've added a keyframe in the middle to just kind of fix that. Let's say I'm adding this light. If I go into my animation scenes, that light will be there in every single clip. That is perfectly fine if that's what you want. But if in some certain scenes you don't want this light to show, so you're gonna have to hide it in every single scene. So you click on the scene, hide the light, and then update. It's not difficult or hard, but you can see on the left how many lights I've added. It does get a little confusing sometimes, I'm not gonna lie, but we got there in the end. And then it's just a matter of putting them in Premiere Pro and if you're uploading this to Instagram or TikTok, of course, recording your audio, making sure that everything lines up perfectly. But that's about it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and that you found it useful. That's what I'm saying. So leave me a comment. Yeah, you didn't say comment. You said leave me in the description below. <laughs> oh, did I not? Yeah, you're like, how are we gonna leave you? Oh <laughs> yeah. Just say it again, just in case I missed okay, it. Awesome. Leave me a comment. Comment down below. Not leave me a comment in the comment below. In the comments. Huh? Comment down below what videos you'd like to see from me next. I'm Rosha Shiruru, and I'll see you next time. Bye. See how short the simpler. <laughs> Leave me, I, I leave me down so below. Put a, leave a comment in the comment down below. Like I say things so long.